Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the show. I uh, hope you guys are all having fun coding out there. Uh, this is the show where I teach you guys how to build applications, uh, usually in one take. And today we have a very fun lesson in how to actually convert our current YouTube application from Swift 2.3 to Swift 3.0. So why don't we go ahead and get started today uh, by turning our attention to our project here. So I already have the uh, old YouTube project loaded inside of Xcode 8. I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to convert the code over. So if you have the project loaded already and you don't see that prompt that comes up to tell you to convert your code, you can go ahead and hit the very top right edit button and you'll find the convert to current Swift syntax menu option right there, convert to Swift 3, uh, hitting the next. And this is going to allow the application, the, uh, the editor, to migrate all of the old Swift code to Swift 3. And upon completion, it's going to show you all of the places in your code that needs to be uh, modified. So let me just open this guy a little bit wider so I can see more of the code here. There we go. So the current code is being modified inside of API servers and also the rest of these files that are checked on the very top left. Let me just get a drink here. Mm. And so API service is the very first file here. You'll notice that the blocks or the closures in your Swift code are now marked with an at escaping a uh, bit of text, this little syntax here. So what that means, I don't exactly know. It has to do with the retain cycle of the closure, I believe. So you don't have to uh, care about it too much, but just make sure all your parameter closures have an at escaping inside of Swift 3. And so moving down further below the file here, you'll see the most uh, obvious fix or the most obvious change inside of Swift 3 is that all of the NS classes, or most of them anyhow, have been changed so that they no longer include NS inside of the actual prefix of the class. So for example, NS URL session has been changed to URL session. So that's pretty good, it means that we don't have to type two more characters, which I find to be uh, pretty good. And further down below, the area where it says dispatch async namely this block right here. This is the syntax for the dis dispatch queue has been changed to dispatch queue main.async. Now the migration includes this execute bit of syntax, but you actually don't need it. So I'm gonna show you guys how to fix that just a little bit later. Uh, if you go to app delegate, some of the changes here that are kind of interesting, maybe interesting, uh, is the change where now these enums or these enumerations inside of Swift 3 have their entire uh, first letter changed to lowercase. So instead of capital default, it is now lowercase default. And similarly, light content has been changed to lowercase light content. And what else is down here? So that's it for the boring old app delegate file. Inside of extensions, Let's take a look at the very first change in Swift 3, where all of these parameters have a underscore behind it or before it. Uh, in other words, the underscore, or what this really means uh, inside of Swift 3, is that the underscore uh, gets rid of the, the requirement of typing in the first parameter. So red, you don't have to type. And uh, if you don't have this underscore there, you have to type out the red word whenever you are specifying the parameters inside of your method call. So we might go into that a little bit later. You see the underscore here again. And what else is down here? So the other interesting bit of code to actually fix is this NS cache. So you don't see the error inside of the editor right now, but NS cache will have to be modified so that it actually works in Swift 3. So we're gonna get into that a little bit later. Uh, down here, you see again, dispatch queue or dispatch queue, uh, trying to get back onto the main queue has been changed to this syntax there. So let me just undo that. And if I go to feed cell, you see that the colors are all just uh, lowercase dot white now instead of dot white color. So that's pretty good. You don't have to type in the entire word out. And brown likewise has 
been changed to just brown. Uh, what else is down here that I want to talk about? Okay. The other issue with the migration process of Xcode 8 is that sometimes it'll try to cast, or actually all of the time, it tries to cast the NS index path guy um, to an NS index path. So this method called uh, self or item at index path, this index path has been changed to just good old index path. And uh, down here, because of some strange reason, they want to cast it as an NS index path. So you don't really need this casting. And I'll show you guys how to fix this uh, just a little bit later. You see it occur uh, in other places of the code as well. So we'll go ahead and take care of that a little bit later. Uh, I don't think there's anything that is too interesting that I want to talk about. Uh, a lot of these Boolean properties now have an is before the actual property name. So that's, uh, that's kind of following common convention in a lot of programming languages today. That's why they decided to add that, I believe. Uh, what else is there? A lot of this stuff is not too interesting. And I think I can go ahead and hit the save button. Okay. So I'm gonna hit the save and then we're gonna see a bunch of errors. And I'll walk you through exactly how to fix each of those errors. Okay. So I just hit the save, which means that uh, we're taking in all of the Swift 3 migration changes. And if I hit the build by hitting Command B, uh, the editor will prompt us to fix all of these errors on the left. So why don't we go ahead and fix the easiest uh, compiler errors first, and then we'll move on to the hard ones. Okay, the first one is to actually get rid of these parentheses here. And that's all you need to do. Move down below, get rid of that, get rid of this, and see that and that right there. I think we can get rid of this. And you slowly see the errors disappearing, which is always a good thing. Uh, remove this here, and I think one more here. Nope, that one looks good. This brown looks good. And if we build the project one more time, you'll see that most of the errors have already gone away, uh, with the exception of this NS cache thing that I was mentioning a little bit earlier. So what is the problem here? It says generic parameter key type could not be inferred. So without trying to explain what this actually means, the fix looks like this. You have to specify the actual key of this NS cache that maps to a certain value. So that you have to specify the key type, which will be a string to a value of UI image. So remember our image cache uh, works by trying to get a URL or to try to get an image based on a URL key. So the URL is a string. And if we build the project again, you'll see that the there's still a compiler error right here. And if you click on, actually, you have to change this colon to a comma. So build the project again. And now it says that type string does not conform to protocol any object. So what the hell does that mean? Uh, well, the, uh, the short answer is that string is actually not a class. Instead, a Swift string like this is actually a struct, which does not actually uh, qualify as an any object. And the easiest fix to this error is to just use an a string, which is a good old Objective-C class. And if you build a project now, that error has gone away. So the, the compiling has improved a little bit. Now the error down here has been uh, flagged as this URL string cannot convert this type of string to the NS string that we specified for our cache whenever we're trying to access an object out of it. If you just click the little helper here and uh, it'll cast the string to an NS string, which is uh, an easy fix and it's not too dangerous. So let's just apply it down there as well. Hopefully, uh, the errors will go away. Okay, so you see down here it says uh, downcast from UI image optional to UI image uh, is not a good thing to do because uh, you just don't want to do that type of casting. And the fix is to just remove that casting and build the project again. You should have that error all uh, squared away. 
So finally, the fix I want to get to now, and this is a very, very uh, complicated and very frustrating thing about Swift. And let me just get some spaces down here. Okay. So this really, really, uh, really, really long warning or error message here is pretty hard to really understand. And the whole thing with ranges in Swift is that it constantly changes. So this range class, close range, open range, uh, dot, dot range, string dot index. Uh, I really honestly do not know why they keep changing it. So uh, this code right here, the easiest way to fix this is to just comment that up. And instead of using this key start index thing that no longer works, I'm going to say let range equals ns make range, which is the old objective C way of doing things. And all I want to do is zero and one. And I'll tell you why, or I'll tell you what exactly is going on here in just a little bit. So let me just fix the error of let selector strings. So I'm just trying to map this to a uh, bit of code that will compile. And I'm going to execute this key replacing characters on an NS string instead. So let's use NS string with that key right there. And now I can execute replace characters in range with the range I created above. And the string will be this uppercase first character that is right there. And if you build a project, everything should be uh, okay. So before I tell you what that fix really does, let me just run the code and see if the application actually looks okay. Okay, we have the application, you scroll through it, you click through some of the menu bars, everything looks fine and everything is compiling okay, no warnings, no errors, except for this uh, deprecated iOS 9 thing that was there before. But other than that, everything is fine. The project compiles now and you can run it, you can modify it to do whatever you want. So going back to what this uh, fix is actually doing. I uh, remember way back then in uh, maybe August or something, we did this little exercise where we made the JSON parsing really, really simple by uh, using the set value with this dictionary keys thing. And in order for all this stuff to work, we had to modify the selector or the setter so that the set value would cooperate with keys that didn't exist inside of your object. So definitely, a uh, if you guys need a refresher on that, watch the JSON video. I think it was probably episode 15 of the series. Um, I have a link down below if you guys want to revisit that video. Anyhow, this fix just pretty much changes the first character of the, the set value key right here. That's, what, that's why we're specifying 0 and 1, just to swap out the first character. Anyhow. I probably went into that a little bit too much, or you guys uh, probably don't want to hear anything more about this setter fix. And I want to move on to something else that is a little bit of a nuisance uh, when I see it in the code here. So uh, the thing I want to focus on is this little bit of code where it's trying to cast index path uh, into an NS index path, okay? And I was talking about this earlier, so what is the problem here? Well, the index path that you see being, paths, uh, being passed to self item at index path is of type regular index path. And uh, down here is trying to cast it down as an NS index path. First question I have is why is NS index path still a class in Swift 3. I don't really know the answer to that yet. Maybe I'll find out. If you guys know the answer to why this class is still here, please leave a comment down below and let me know why. Um, the thing I want to do is I'm going to copy all of this, hit Command Shift F, I think. It gives me the global find, and I'll find this bit of string. So you'll see that the migration uh, actually converted this code in about five or six places. So I'm gonna get rid of all of this by changing all of this here to just say index path. And that's all we need. So I don't really understand why they want to do this casting, but uh, it's a bit of a an eyesore whenever I see this in my code. So I'm gonna copy that, go inside of all of 
the areas where this casting is happen, uh, happening, I'm going to just copy the index path straight into the bit of code. Okay, and the reason why I'm doing this is because the casting is absolutely unnecessary in my opinion because item accesses the same thing on index path. And there we go. So we're running this application now. Hopefully it'll compile. Looks like it's doing okay. It's running, running, running. And here we go. The application launches and everything looks fine. So that's, that's good. That's all fine and dandy and everything looks okay. So the next thing I sort of want to mention just briefly is the actual diff of this entire project. So if you guys have not used GitHub before or are fam unfamiliar with Git itself, you can actually download this cool uh, tool called GitX. And GitX is this window that you're seeing on the screen right here. And the cool thing about GitX is that uh, if you open up the project for your uh, Xcode project, you'll see all of the changes here that reflect what has been edited uh, from your current uh, commit and your or your previous commit uh, to the current changes that you just made. So all this code in here is a ch are the changes that both the Xcode 8 editor made and that I just made inside of Xcode 8. So all of these changes um, I can see very clearly inside of Git X. So I can just click on these files. And if I wanted to actually commit them into my Git uh, repository, I can just drag it over there. And you see in the middle, you have this thing called Git message. So uh, converting Swift 2.3 to Swift 3. And then you hit the commit button and then it'll actually commit it uh, to the head of your Git repo or your Git branch. So that's how this works. Uh, the question is, or the question now is, why am I using this instead of the tool provided by Xcode? So let's see what Xcode does. So source control, uh, let's see, commit, I think. So I rarely use this guy. And you see that the uh, Xcode editor also comes with a very, very similar tool. Uh, it's actually quite nice. Um, I am not exactly sure why I don't use it. I guess maybe I'm a little old school and I prefer the old UI of Git X. I think this, uh, it tries to be a little too fancy for me. And I don't exactly like uh, checking these boxes here as well. Uh, I find Git X's UI is a lot more uh, easier and also allows you to uh, perform changes a lot quicker. Okay, that's gonna be it for today's video. I just wanted to make this short, short lesson on how to convert Swift 2.3 to Swift 3.0 because I know a lot of you guys have been asking for this and have also been wondering how to run the old YouTube project. So here it is. Uh, you can download the project from the link below and make modifications, make sure it runs on your machine. And yeah, leave a comment down below if it doesn't work still. Uh, all right, having said that, uh, make sure to leave a thumbs up for the video if you enjoyed it. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And that is all for today. Keep on coding, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.